Hi everyone, it's Vicky here and welcome back. Today I'm showcasing a new collection by Altenew. This is the Paint a Flower collection. Every month they will come up with a lovely flower that you can use your favorite coloring mediums to color it in. And this month we get a poppy. You can get this stamp set in a discount if you become a subscriber of the Paint a Flower collection. This costs $15.99, but if you are a subscriber, you can get it in a discount for uh, $12.99. I'm using my Mini Misty to do the stamping. I will stamp on white cardstock and I'm using my black permanent ink. This is an ink that is uh, alcohol friendly since I'm planning to use my Alta New alcohol markers to color everything. Now I like to stamp my images a couple of times just to get a nice bold line. You can of course stamp the image centered on your panel. I decided to stamp more than once just to have a fuller image to color in. So I'm going to uh, place this in another area and stamp one more time. And notice that in the finished result, although I'm using the same flower, just because the flowers are facing in different directions, they don't look identical, although they are a repeat of the same stamp. Now the Paint a Flower collection is uh, specifically designed for you to play with your coloring mediums. So you can start by using your alcohol markers, then you can stamp again and use your uh, watercolors. It is a great way to practice your coloring and have fun throughout the month until the next flower set comes into the mail. Now the fun part about this is that you know that you will have a lovely flower stamp set because uh, Altenew is famous for their flower designs and nobody does flower stamps better than Altenew. For coloring my images today I'm using my Altenew alcohol markers and I'm not doing any fussy coloring at all. I'm actually only using two markers, a light and a darker shade of a red. So the two markers that I'm using are crimson, which is the lighter one, and velvet, which is the darker, the darker one. Really basic coloring and you will see that even if you use only two markers and you don't do anything fancy, it's going to look really beautiful. So I'm covering up completely the petal with a lighter shade of red and then at the base of the petal I'm going to add some strokes of the darker shade of red. Just like that. Super simple. Now wherever you see any folds of the petals, just add some shadow with a darker shade. I use the exact same technique to color the other poppy and then I'm going to move on and start coloring the leaves. For that again I will only use two shades of green, a lighter and a darker shade. The lighter one is bamboo and the darker is forest glades. This video is part of a blog hub so make sure to visit my blog for a chance to win one of the many giveaways throughout the blog hub and you will find beautiful inspiration where designers did amazing job on coloring these poppies. And just like always you will find the full list of all the supplies that I used down below in the description area. So you see again I'm doing only basic coloring, nothing fancy, however the image comes to life. I'm going to finish off the coloring by adding some uh, dark grey at the centers. I really don't care about how the centers are going to look at the moment since I am planning to add some black nouveau at the top to add some shine, which is a step that I will do at the very end. Now you can leave it as it is or you can take it a step further by bringing out your uh, color pencils which is exactly what I'm going to show you. So I'm going to bring in a darker shade of red from my Prismacolors and when I'm working with Prismacolors over alcohol markers I always have Kathira Cousin in my head. I'm just making the shadows deeper and this is not precise coloring. I'm being really quick here just to show you that you don't have to be perfect about anything. It's going to look beautiful at the end. Now I'm going to show you another fun thing that you can do to add highlights. This is a pastel pencil by Faber-Castell. You can write with it on top of paper and you can smudge it with your fingers to make sure that you don't have any harsh lines. It writes over dark colors you see here on top of black cardstock. Now for this technique to work make sure that you don't press the pencil too much like I did at the top. Otherwise you will not be able to blend it out completely. So make sure that you don't have a pointy nib and I'm not pressing my pencil at all. 
so I'm applying a little bit of that at the top of the petal and blending it out with my finger and I have a lovely and very subtle highlight. So I will do that for some of my petals on both of the poppies. If you're completely coloring an image with pastel pencils then it is advised to use a fixative but for such small areas like I'm doing here only the highlight I will not worry about it at all and will not use a fixative. Now I'm going to zoom in once I finish with the highlighting where you can see all the highlighting at the tips of the petals and how this enhances the coloring and really brings them to life. Now back to my misty and this time I'm going to use some masking paper by Gina K Designs and I'm going to stamp the flower one more time. This time I'm going to use my scissors and do some fuzzy cutting since I'm planning to use a blending tool to create some sky at the background and I don't want to cover up my beautiful colored flowers. So this is going to take a while to fuzzy cut this flower however I can always keep this mask for future use. When I am cutting an image that uh, is going to be used as a mask like this one here I always make sure that I cut it out where the black lines are slightly inside the black lines actually so when I go over it with my blending tool you will see I will not end up with a small halo all around the image and once I have everything cut out I'm going to remove the backing and place it on top of my flower make sure that it covers it up completely and just because I didn't cut out the black outline you can see the outline from underneath from the flower which is exactly what I wanted to ensure that I will not have that white halo all over. Now I'm going for a very subtle look at the background and that's why I'm using one of those new blending brushes. You cannot have harsh lines with these brushes and um, one of their disadvantages actually is that uh, you have to uh, reload them again and again with ink, which is why I'm not a big fan of them. However, when you are after a very sad look, they are perfect for that. Now I'm going to remove the mask from one poppy and move it to the other one so that I can do the back of that area as well. And I'm not planning to cover up completely the background. I just want to have some subtle uh, sky behind the flowers. You'll see I will not go all the way to the top. And this looks gorgeous as it is, but uh, if you are like me and you don't know where to stop, well, I was having lots of fun coloring this today, so I just grabbed uh, another Prismacolor pencil in a darker shade of green to deepen up the shadows on the um, leaves. Now you can have a very blended look. You will see in the finished photos that I wasn't going for a super blended look. I wanted to see the brush strokes. I just love the look and it adds even more character to this image. So let's turn this into a card. For that I'm going to stamp one of the sentiments that was included in the stamp set and uh, I'm going to stamp that with my embossing ink on top of black cardstock and just apply on top white embossing powder. I'm going to use my heat gun to melt it and use a circle die to cut it out. I'm also going to use black cardstock to mat my colored image. I love how the black border brings the colors to life. I absolutely love the bold look of it. And I'm going to stick that on a four and a quarter by five and a half pre-folded card by using foam tape at the back just to pop it up a little bit and add some dimension. I will pop on top my sentiment and now I'm going to add some uh, uh, finishing touches. For that I will use the black Nouveau to add some shine at the center of my uh, flower. And as I was filling uh, the center of the other flower, I made the boo boo. Hopefully, you can see that black dot on at the top of one of the petals. So I need to be creative later on and somehow cover it up. So I have uh, black dots all over the seeds as well as at the center of the poppies. And now I'm going to use my uh, red gems first of all to cover up that uh, black smudge. And it's going to add some extra something on my card as well. So gems are always handy not only to add sparkle, but also cover up any mistakes. 
So that was the project for today. I hope you had fun and that you got inspired as I took you through the whole process of coloring this image. Here are some close-up photos. Don't forget to leave me a comment down below, to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you all so much for joining me today and I'll see you all next time.